Welcome to Business Chronicles by Rogers Capital Tax. Today we have the pleasure of inviting the CEO of the Financial Services Commission, Vikash Thakur. In our upcoming discussion with Vikash Thakur, we'll delve into Mauritius' evolving role in the financial world, the exciting introduction of new financial products, the regulatory hurdles that come with progress, and the collaborative efforts that propel its global influence. Shall we dive right in? Sure. Welcome Vikash, it's a pleasure having you here on this platform. Let's now dive right into the heart of these topics, starting with our first question. Yeah. Looking ahead from the regulator's perspective, how do you foresee the positioning of Mauritian, Mauritius within the next five years? The financial services sector is so dynamic and the business environment is also in a state of mutation that a five-year prediction might be quite tight to predict with precision. However, in terms of the trends and our own strategic plan, we do see Mauritius going forward with the regulation and the offering of products that are aligned with the demand of the market. And on that perspective, if you look at the demands of the market, we feel that there is first the advent of all activities in the virtual asset space, which is, will drive lots of traction uh, in this area, plus a continuation of our baseline of products. Here, I have in mind our fund structure and the forte of our business. If we just rest on what we have, that is, we keep into our comfort zone, we will lose out on what is the uh, emerging uh, in the market. And this is the reason why we have, at an early stage, already issued the Virtual Assets and Initial Token Offering Act, which therefore lays the foundation for what is coming. And as you mentioned, in the perspective of the next five years, I see the Mauritius jurisdiction increasing from where we are, that is consolidating our base and embracing uh, these uh, new technologies and new setups. We already have demands in this area. At the same time, the traditional product, of the way we see it, uh, just as an investment, this will also change to a lot extent. Let us have a look at our recent offerings and the changes that we had. We that we are laying emphasis on wealth management, we are laying emphasis on family offices and this is an area where we will still go forward to uh, not only say consolidate but rather get a big substance uh, from there. If we go forward, it is always important for a regulator to see what is changing in the world. If you look at the shift in the economic power, it's changing towards the Asian markets. It's shifting heavily towards, uh, I would say, the India-China couple and therefore that region. And therefore, the way even we perceived our investment in India and China uh, will change and therefore we need to adapt to what are the demands of these markets. So is the FSC, the Financial Services Commission, as regulator, uh, are they coming up, are you coming up with um, a framework for ESG's environmental, social and governance principles? 
The answer is uh, yes and no at the same time. Uh, I would say we are heavily involved in the framework for uh, ESG. Uh, our strategic plan the, for the past three years, which uh, is published and public, we already uh, coined ESG uh, to be one of the pillars of growth in the financial services, especially in the fund area. And we are very much poised at the same time uh, have all the necessary qualities to be the jurisdiction of choice for uh, ESG. The reason being that we already have lots of fund structures uh, that are here managed, set up by the DFIs from Europe, from the UK, and they invest even in Africa. And the edge that we want to bring in it is the ESG. So you ask whether we are coming up. Yes, we have already worked on our ESG uh, framework, but that framework will be, a will be put at the disposition of the Ministry of Financial Service and Good Governance, which is driving the national ESG framework. As the ESG framework, FSC might be one component in it, so we have already worked on our funds area. Uh, we need just to now work on other products on the framework. And framework is method of disclosure, etc. And that work it will now be uh, taken over by the ministry, where they are currently working to uh, hire the services of a consultant who will therefore put all the national level framework uh, together. The whole world is very sensitive to climate change and therefore uh, the ESG will come in it. But I don't always like to stress only on the E side of it because the E side will not stand alone. This, I always say the E, S and G are just like connecting vessels. So you need to have a proper governance as well as the social responsible actions for the E to work at the same time. So at the same time, uh, that will strengthen Mauritius' uh, position as a forward-looking IFC, I must say. Definitely. Uh, uh, moving forward, IFCs, which will not be able to provide, in my opinion, uh, the necessary comfort and guidance for uh, business to be carried out in an ESG manner, will lose out a lot in terms of foreign funding. We already see a number of uh, international bodies, not necessarily uh, through investment, but just look at the disclosures that they require. And if you are not compliant, you might, they will just say, okay, we will no longer do business. It could be a simple import and export because the whole world is now concerned about uh, where and how businesses are carried out and whether these are carried out in a ESG responsible manner. I give you a simple example. Let us say we've got two companies have got funds to invest, and one would have a massive business if ever these funds are ESG compliant. We have lots of structures that could are already existing, for instance, in Africa, which has got a large uh, carbon footprint, and they need to decrease that. And the choice would be how investment will be carried out because some of the fundings will come through the commitments of governments on the different COP meetings that they have. So the funds will never be uh, allowed to, to, to be invested if you don't give that guarantee. Now you spoke about the robustness. Actually the robustness is basically this framework which uh, will lay down the principles through which those investments need to be carried out and uh, need to be structured. By when do you think that the framework will be available? From our side, from the FSC side, our framework is already uh, completed. We will go through a process of public consultation. But as I say this is really one component of the national framework. I don't have the timelines of the ministry 
I do believe that they would very fast complete the engagement of the consultant, uh, not to be too much uh, over enthusiastic on their timeline. I do believe that if the consultant starts working uh, before the end of the year, it should be um, an exercise that should not take more than uh, six months. I don't think that there is a need to have the whole framework completed to be able to roll it out. I think phases should be enough for us to start uh, going into that bandwagon. Yeah. Considering the competitive landscape, how do you approach maintaining Mauritius' appeal to investors and other jurisdictions? This is one area where we are always looking at the competitive edge. We do listen from our very close neighbours that they are doing a lot in the area of coming up as an IFC and therefore to be able to compete with us. Although we should not forget that we have 25 years of fruitful existence. We take every occurring in the world very seriously. So first thing is that we are not keeping ourselves in our comfort zone. We have a team which basically analyzes and looks at what's going on. So our approach is multi-pronged. First, from the product offering side, uh, what are the new products coming in and how we can deploy them? What is the appeal for such products? Then on the business environment side, and the business environment side comprises your uh, tax and other benefits that we have. And this is also linked with our own treaties, but at the same time being under pressure of international benchmarks. GMT would be, global minimum tax would be one of them. So you need to play with them and not to fall in the trap of harmful tax practices. So it is not a straightforward uh, area. All of this part is called the business environment. But that again leads to further changes is with respect to what are the incentives that you give over and above to the investors and at the same time what are the actual political comfort that you would give to the investors. And one aspect that we do not forget and we put forward everywhere is the qualification and the quality of our workforce being very conversant in two or three languages and at the same time have a very very high level of education which might not be ca the case for other jurisdiction or if it is these people are not necessarily uh, from within the country they might be uh, it's a very important, important aspect labor. by the way exactly exactly so as I said, uh, we just sharpen every edge that we can on how we uh, try to uh, attract the, uh, the investors. I've not spoken about all the other parameters that we have, ease of doing business, uh, the way we interact, our hub. But safe to say, we are very uh, well positioned. We benefit from a number of trucks, treaties or free trade agreements, we could be the only one to claim that we are the center of a real connection between uh, China, India and uh, Africa, Africa being the potential growth area. So all these actually converge towards saying that uh, there is no reason for us not to push forward and to continue to thrive in this area. So we have been speaking about the uh, benefits and advantages of uh, Mauritius as a regulatory framework, but what are the key challenges that we are actually facing and how are we addressing these challenges to ensure again uh, a robust and adaptable framework? First of all, we need to identify those challenges and which comes naturally as we go along 
and trying to identify our weaknesses and perhaps the strengths of our competitors to, to address them. Uh, to go straight on the point, I would say that let us start with the biggest asset that we have. And our asset, asset is our workforce and our expertise in uh, certain areas. And currently we see a lot of people uh, just being trained, let us say here, and then they go to work uh, elsewhere. Luxembourg being perhaps one of the uh, countries where uh, our qualified workforce is moving for the reason that uh, it's in Europe and it's also very similar to our jurisdiction with people requiring to be very much bilingual, huh? English and French. And that makes, uh, I would say, two types of uh, exodus of talent. First is the people themselves, they're going. So the investment that have been made uh, on these people, they go together. And the second problem is that they go away with your intellectual property. What you've been doing, what are the key uh, trade secrets, these also move. And this one is a bit more dangerous because uh, perhaps we would all be more comfortable to share the information within ourselves. And for that purpose, we need to have a much, we need to identify what makes these people move. Is it only the salary? Are there other things? So this is being addressed perhaps at the national level. We do contribute to it. The second point is our challenge being we are so often and too much unduly criticized, being put under pressure for things we do not do. In other words, our jurisdiction is too much silent on international critics. Too many papers, too many uh, articles come on a weekly, fortnightly basis, hinting, bashing and pointing the finger to the Mauritius with pre, I would say, uh, determined etiquettes, tax haven being one of them. At the same time, uh, shell companies being another one. At the same time, telling us that here people just uh, do business for the sake of registering companies, but we don't know how to do it. And this, I think, is a serious matter that needs to be collectively addressed by everybody, the government and the operators. The operators are the frontliners with the investment community. So we need to have an approach whereby we constantly dispel the myth around uh, Mauritius, continuously speak about the strength of our regulatory framework, the strength of our institutions, and the transparency of our jurisdiction. Another point which is very important is the need to be always compliant with international trend setters. And here I mean the FATF, which although last time we went through brilliantly ahead of time, but this is one area where the goalpost changes. Don't expect or we should not expect uh, Mauritius to be assessed in the way it was assessed the first time. Because now they have already changed a lot in terms of the uh, methodology, what is required. And they will not forget that you've gone to the first stage. So now showing progress from there on will still be uh, an area to challenge. We have felt it, we have lived it, what it calls to be in some sort of these areas. So it's a primordial. And where do you strike the balance between uh, the investors who want to come and to work against the need to keep? Some investors do feel that they should be treated lightly. And they say, uh, and I 
we do have such uh, challenges at the commission as a regulator where uh, even our licenses would say that yes if this particular investor is not given the license he will go to another jurisdiction and these are very difficult uh, decisions to make the reputation perhaps one in out of 10,000 uh, licensee might spoil the reputation of the whole jurisdiction so need to be very very much uh, aware about it and for that purpose it's again uh, an exercise where the regulator and the regulators need to work together the extent to which we all understand the interpretation of the law correctly the extent to which we need to look about look at our long-term gain rather than short-term money spikes that might have all these come uh, collectively for us to to address and uh, this leads to uh, the the fact that uh, for us everybody should be uh, compliant and work towards what is uh, needed in this area the introduction of the vitals initiative in mauritius has garnered attention could you elaborate on how these offerings contribute to the financial attractiveness of Mauritius as a financial jurisdiction? As I mentioned, the virtual asset space is one area of, you may call it the broadened financial services, where there is a demand and where there is also a need to be the early movers in it. Now let us look at the reality. We as regulators couldn't be ignorant to the fact that transactions on virtual asset is are already taking place from Mauritius. And a lot of people are being called upon to uh, perhaps invest in this with little to no knowledge in it and as I always say in the virtual space there are two category of people those who don't understand and those who pretend to understand leading to the fact that we as regulators we found a customer education very important at the same time we had the FATF recommendation 15 which requires jurisdictions to come up with the necessary legislations under the virtual assets to prevent all those uh, financial crimes such as money laundering uh, financing of terrorism etc and we did work and that was key to Mauritius getting compliant or largely compliance on all the 40 recommendations of the FATF. So this is the background and the necessity for which we had the Vitus Act. And then to align to the actual question, how this is going to add to the, uh, to the portfolio of uh, the Mauritian offering, is the fact that players are now able to come here as i said be the uh, early movers in it and start therefore offering deploying those products within the regulatory framework and this is very important uh, if you don't have regulatory framework anybody can come and give any product within the regulatory framework there are two things that come in first is that the regulator is involved and second is that the regulator therefore has a purview of what's uh, going on and of course in this process we are all learning those which will go forward maintain and be here with respect to the type of offering they will therefore contribute to building the reputation of Mauritius as a 
fintech and virtual assets friendly jurisdiction. There are not many. And whatever would be the fallout of such ventures in this area would be to our benefit. We will benefit from learning uh, very early on. The technology is moving quite fast and the use case applications are also uh, very much alive. What will also happen and the way we see it is a convergence of the virtual asset space on the real asset space for a number of activities. Uh, the straightforward example would be uh, the trading of securities, which is based on the actual stock market. But at the same time, in parallel, we have trading of virtual assets, which takes place in a similar manner with a listing, with a price going on, and perhaps the gradual conversion or convergence of the platforms on which we might have uh, physical and virtual assets being traded. So it is some sort of a projection, but we need to start it here and to be able to move forward. Mauritius is uh, currently being named as those jurisdictions where we have licenses. And we believe that uh, so long as we work together and within the parameters of the, of the framework, we should be safe and should be able to uh, see what happens uh, in this area. It is tipped, this virtual asset space to be, is tipped to be a, a potential for massive uh, uh, capital transformation. Uh, in it, uh, so long as it is taking place uh, in a well-regulated uh, environment. So thank you, Vikash, for being present on our platform, Business Chronicles, and thank you for sharing your valuable insights. I'm sure our viewers have been well, very well informed. Thank you. Thank you very much for inviting me to share our views and uh, our insights on what we are doing. And I do believe that this is the starting point of about what I was speaking about, a good and interactive collaboration between the regulator and the business community. Thank, Thank you very you. much indeed. That's all for today's episode. See, See you in the, the next, next one. one.